Good morning and welcome. Welcome to our worship on this rainy day. It's just so hot outside and so humid and uh, too wet really to be in the outdoor worship. So I welcome you to see this uh, on the other side of the screen. And we just have a few people here that are um, presenting this worship to you. And I thank uh, Grace and uh, Carol for, for opening up the worship service. The song we just sang, Holy Ground, is is, is not just here with me in the sanctuary and my friends, or even just outside in the chapel. The holy ground is where you are. And we wanna make sure that you feel that holiness today as we begin to worship. Now, I want you to think for a minute, this is our, our kids' time, and I wanna think about the word awe. And it, um, when you see fireworks in the sky, and you um, get a really big one and several of them, what do you, what do you say? Ooh, ah, ah, you know, you, you kind of go, you kind of have this expression. And when you see you know, a little baby, especially a newborn, and they're cooing and, and just being so cute, don't you just go, ah, oh, they're so cute. You know, you kind of, kind of, kind of feel really this warm fuzzy inside. And it's the same thing when you see a, a, an older couple of, um, that have been married for decades and decades and decades. And they've had this long relationship and they have a big family together. And you celebrate their 50th or 60th, and I've even celebrated a 70th anniversary with a couple. Um, it, as you celebrate those anniversaries, it, it, another awe comes in front of you. It, it's, it's, it's an amazing, to see the love um, that lasts years and years and years. And it, that's the same kind of awe that we want to have with God. So we imagine that we're in, on holy ground. We imagine that there are angels worshiping with us. And we imagine that oh, God is present. And that's the thing we, we start when we start worship. God is present, just like when we saw that little baby, just like when we saw the fireworks, just like when we see love of an older couple. God is present. So everybody just close your eyes for a second. And just imagine God with you. And what would it be like if you saw one of Jesus' miracles? Ah. Oh, yeah. What, what would it be like if you if you looked at the cross and Jesus was looking down on you with love? You'd be ah. Oh. So that's where we get that word awesome. And though we use it a lot, we say awesome a lot. Ah oh, is really a word that we use for God. So stand in his presence on holy ground. So we want to pray today. So our, our prayer will end with the prayer that, that always brings awe to my heart, and I hope yours too. We're going to end with the Lord's Prayer. So we're just going to pray quickly for, for the people in our community and for, for those that we don't know and those that are working on the front lines. So let's pray. God, you are awesome and holy. And you are so special to us that we truly just want you to be in presence, your presence with us today as we pray and as we worship. There are many who, who need your love and care, and so we, we petition for them this morning as we, as we bow our heads. For it's not all about us, it's really about um, all the people in your kingdom. So we lift up those that are hurting, especially those that are, are suffering with cancer, or have um, started on hospice treatment. As they continue to think, Lord, that they are closer to you than we are, we just pray, Lord, that they, they have blessed days and continue to, to lift up your holy name as something to be praised. And Lord, we, we want to think about the, the people that are, are working with um, patients and um, are in danger of maybe picking up COVID-19. We just know, Lord, that those that are working with the emergencies and and other things that can be pretty dangerous. And even as we hear about other cases or um, cases going up and stays far from us, we just, Lord, just ask you to help us find a solution to this pandemic. It's just really got our country down as well as the world, and it's, it's a global problem. So Lord, help us to, to find solutions to, your, to this problem. It is not your will for us to be taken down this way, but it is your will for us to live, to praise you, and to your glory. 
I want to lift up a prayer for a special couple uh, in the congregation. They're looking for a car. Um, so I just want to ask you, Lord, to, to walk, put your hand on them and help them, guide them to a car that they can, they can use. There are some that, that have been injured lately, and Lord, we just thank you for the healing and that you will continue to, to be with them. And also, Lord, put your hand on our VBS program so that as we, we make the final cuts for the, the videos that, um, that they are what will reach your, your children for, for, for the good of your kingdom. Lord, we just thank you for all the rain and the sunshine when we get it. Um, I know there are many people hardworking outside, and we ask that you would help them remember to hydrate and slow down. There are so many things that could happen. We just pray, Lord, for their safety. So all this, Lord, we, we offer up to you, for we are your congregation that is continuing to, to work um, with you to bring about those miracles that uh, you want to happen. And so we pray together the way that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For many people, that's the most sacred, most holy time of service when we say this prayer. But don't forget that. It can be something that, that would draw Christ into your heart, heart during the week, too. So um, we're going to have our scriptures next and then our message. Um, so Grace, would you bring that to us? So the first scripture reading for today is Genesis chapter 28, the message. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and camped through the night since the sun had set. He took one of the stones there, set it under his head, and lay down to sleep. And he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground, and it reached all the way to the sky. The angels of God were going up and going down on it. Then God was right before him, saying, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I'm giving the ground on which you are sleeping, to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. They'll stretch from the west to the east and from the north to the south. All the families of earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. Yes, I'll stay with you. I'll protect you whenever you go, wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until you, I've done everything I promised you. Jacob woke up from his sleep. He said, God is in this place, truly, and I didn't even know it. He was terrified. He whispered in awe, incredible, wonderful, holy. This is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob was up first thing in the morning. He took the stone he had used for his pillow and stood up, stood it up as a memorial pillar and poured oil all over it. He then Christ into the place of Bethel, God's house. The name of the town had been loose until then. The next scripture reading is Matthew chapter 13, the message. He told another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer who planted gold, good seed in his field. That night, while his hired men were asleep, his enemy sowed thistles all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistle showed up too. The farmhands came to the farmer and said, Master, that was the clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did the thistles come from? He answered, Some enemy did this. The farmhands asked, Should we weed out the thistles? He said, No. If you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bundles for the fire. Then gather the wheat and put it in the barn. This is the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, as we think on these scriptures, as we think on these scriptures, both of them familiar, and how are they related? Well, it's, it's that we want to be the wheat in that story. We don't want to be the, the, the thistles. And to get to be the, the wheat, we decide that we need to worship God and to be more a part of what God is doing. We all have different opinions on what's sacred and holy. So this altar that we have here um, is considered a sacred place. And early on in our ministry here, um, the praise band was practicing here, and I set the microphone and my book on the altar. And, and they all just went, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> you thought that I did something unsacred or irreligious. And, you know, I, I set my hymnals on the altar all the time. And I, I, whatever I'm using as a tool, I sit there. So I didn't think anything of it. But apparently there was another pastor here that, that taught that nothing was supposed to be on the altar except what was blessed and, and set aside for that. Now, I want to share that um, I had a very um, non-sacred moment um, a couple of months ago. Um, and my sisters like to say what happened to me was that I was prostrating myself before God. But as it turned out, I was moving some plants around the altar and trying to get it ready for the next video. And I slipped off this rise here um, and the rise is, you know, a good five inches, and, and I decided that I wasn't going to break my arms, and so I rolled out. And as I rolled out, um, I twisted a lot, and I managed to break my left leg and my right foot. Now, I didn't know that at the time, and, and so as I was laying on the floor, face up, looking at the altar, thinking, God, what am I going to do now? I also started praying, Lord, don't let it be my ankles. I just... I just couldn't imagine because my first thought was, I can't find, I don't know where my phone is. My daughters are far away at the, at the house. And uh, so I had to get up with pain and walk and find my phone and call my daughters. They came and they, they rescued me. But it wasn't a very sacred moment. And it was here on the altar. And, and I'm thinking, how, how can this be? This is supposed to be a holy place, a protected place. But our holy moments, aren't because of what things we have and what it is because of, the, of God's presence that we are holy. And God was in that moment. Now, as it turns out, the Ark of the Covenant, this is not the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant did have rules, like you were taught about the altar. So the Ark of the Covenant was due to come home to David's new house in Jerusalem. But God didn't want it to happen. So he had David wait. And it, the Ark of the Covenant sat for seven years, seven miles outside of, of Jerusalem, at the home of a priest. And when David got ready to bring it home, he, he called for it, and the sons of the priest went out and, and got it and put it on a cart and put, attached the bull to the cart, and the bull pulled it, and they were in parade on the way. When the bull stumbled, and one of the priest's sons reached out to hold the cart so that the, um, the, to hold the Ark of the Covenant so that it wouldn't fall off. And right when he touched the Ark of the Covenant, he died. And the reason why he died is not because he was irreligious in the moment, but he was not reverent enough all the way through in listening to the rules. Now, there were rules for how to carry the Ark of the Covenant. It was not supposed to be touched. It was supposed to have poles that went through the big rings that were on each corner. And the priests were supposed to take it forward. Now because the, the boys were like really too casual about this Ark of the Covenant, didn't really care about it, they, they got, um, God was not in their favor and um, made a point about uh, the boys not taking care of the religious items and, and respecting him. He went, it became just so casual. It's like that, that old Hank Williams song, Dust on the Bible, you know. We, we gotta get, not just get our religious things out and clean them up and put them out so that it, we look good, but do you have it in your heart? 
Do you know what's in the Bible so that you can have Jesus in your heart all the time? Well, so let's get back to our story from Jacob. Jacob, these are um, roots of our faith that we need to know. And Abraham was undeniably faithful all the time. And Isaac, he was good at judging what was right and wrong because of his connection to God through prayer. Now it didn't serve him well when his eyes went blind and his voice deceived him. But as we as we look on excuse me, as we look on what happens to Jacob now, Jacob is the one that we attribute to he is a very reverent person to God. So as we look at his life today, let's look at his life as he leaves the home. He found out his brother was, was going to kill him for what he did to, um, to take away his birthright. And so he, he leaves home with his mother and his father's blessing to go find a wife with his, his cousin's family. So as he heads on out, the first thing he does is he, he, he lays down, he finds a certain place. And that certain place that he finds is the same place that Abraham had, had pitched a tent at one time. So he goes back to where Grandpa had, had been. So th that's a good rule for, for trying to find a place in our house or in our, in our community where we can feel the reverence of God, the like peace of God. So he goes to this one place. And he lays down. He doesn't have a pillow. He doesn't have a tent. He doesn't have a sanctuary. He doesn't have stained glass windows. He doesn't have all this stuff, all the trappings that might inspire him to worship God. But he lays down and falls asleep. Now he waits for sunset. You know, and I know you have your own routine to fall asleep so that you have a good night's sleep. You know, we have health coaches now that say what to do. Um, but he, he really knew how to do it, too. He waited till sunset, found something that could be a pillow, and it's probably like one of those neck bones because it was rock. So he found a rock that fit underneath his neck, and he looked into the sky, and he finds peaceful sleep. And in his deep sleep, he has a dream about God. A dream about God that there's this, this stairway or this ladder going up to heaven, and this ladder that goes up to heaven reaches up to, to God, and God's at the top of the stairway and speaking down to him. And he's just so amazed at this story. And it's such a vivid dream that when he wakes up, he's just in awe. And in those words that, that Grace read, holy, look, you know, uh, that he was just awed at what God was doing there. So all this... In this presence of God is, is overwhelming him. And so he decides that this is the house of God because God lives here. Now that house of God called Bethel, Beth being house, El being God, Bethel is a name that's used all over the place. And it's used to remind people that, that God is present there. This is a place that God is present there. But also wherever you are right now is a place that God is present. And so God, Jacob revered God in that place, and we can revere God in our place. Now, there are a few other things in this story. There's dreams. Jacob, that's not the only dream that Jacob has. He has one later on. And his son Joseph is known as a dreamer and an interpreter of dreams. God comes, can come to us in dreams. God has come to me in dreams when I was ready. Not when my mind was tracking so many things that I couldn't um, get a good night's sleep. Not, not when, you know, I'm feeling just so into myself and, and um, you know, uh, just not paying attention to God. But the times that, that I truly have questions about my life, where I, I pray to God before I fall asleep, and I'm praying to God waking up, and I've gotten myself into a routine, God can come to me and can come to you in a dream to give you some answers. Some life direction. Well, how awesome our God can be. When I was a child, I, I found a place in my bedroom that I would speak to God. Um, I was looking out my window from my bedroom and, and looking out towards my backyard. And every time I stepped up to that window, I, I feel the presence of God. 
now it's, it's when I'm walking the dogs in the morning and I, t I sit in the, the outdoor chapel area and I find God's presence. I need you to find a place at your house too that you can just go whenever you want during the week that you can feel God's presence. Yeah, you might need to light a candle or you might need to turn on some, some soft music, but you need to find a place. And it could be outside. It could be just in your car. Could be anywhere, but you need to find that place and make it sacred, make it holy. Find God's awesomeness for yourself and let that holiness come upon you. Because what reverence is really all about is, is not is trying to, to not offend God. It, and God's only offended when we forget about Him or take Him more casually than we should. So as we, we take a little more seriousness about our faith. No, it's not a piece of furniture. It's not this lectern. It's not that altar. It's about our faith and being serious about our faith that makes reverence important to us. And maybe at the time of day, this time, and I know some of you are watching a little bit later on a YouTube link, it's okay. Make that time your time with God. Max Ocado, um, did I bring my book up here? Oh, no. Max, I've been reading Max Licato lately, and um, he's got his, uh, a book on uh, giants, facing the giants. So it's, and it's been rehearsing the story of David. And, uh, and he says uh, on page 109, his greatest, God's greatest gift is himself. Sunsets steal our breath. Caribbean blue steals our hearts. Newborn babies stir us to tears. Lifelong love, the jewels our lives. But take all these away. Strip all the sunsets, the oceans, the cooing babies, and the tender hearts, and leave us in the Sierra desert, and we would still have a reason to dance in the sand for God. And why? Because God is with us. Wow. It's so true. Take away your sanctuary. You take away seeing the friends that you know, and God is still with you. And there's still a reason to worship God. Holy One, we, we do ask that you would touch each one of us with your special love and make us feel connected through Christ. For nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. Not hardship, not pain, not sword. Nothing can separate us from his love. As we invite into our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I invite us to um, to stand and say the Nicene Creed. I know it's not one that we remember, uh, but that's the Apostles' Creed. Look this up. And uh, Grace is going to lead us in that. He said... We believe in God, the Father of our love, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen in us, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, universal, and apostolic church, 
So um, we had some wonderful news this week that I would love to share with my church family. So um, Ben and Rachel uh, let us actually let the news out. They are going to have a baby in January. So Tom and I get to be grandparents. Find you out come for the first yeah, time. Yeah. So I just ask that you would keep them in your prayers that everything goes well and and they their anxieties are, are calmed and um, that I'm not talking everyone's ear off about the possibility <laughs> of a new family member. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And uh, lastly, uh, Vacation Bible School, just keep us in your prayers as we try to pull that together. We're getting those videos done. Uh, so those are the last things, just Vacation Bible School and a couple of meetings this week. So I'm so glad to have you here, a few people here in my in the congregation that are part of the leadership family and also you behind the screen, you that are watching on YouTube later today. Um, so great to have you with us. And now in the name of the, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go and be holy. Go and live in the righteousness that he has called you to live in and make him um, a blessing to the world. Amen. <laughs>